All right. Welcome everybody uh, to this online um, webinar on YouTube on uh, data harvesting. Uh, my name is Ankit Garg. I am part of the Decibel Capital Group. Um, and I'll be taking you guys through some of the tips and tricks on uh, how to harvest your data daily. Um, this is expected to be a two-part um, webinar or two-part video series uh, in which we'll cover different aspects of logging in and automation of end-to-end -end automation of downloading the daily intraday data without um, paying for it or without, uh, without incurring any additional cost. Uh, so let's get started. Um, this is the part one, as I said, I hope the video screen should be clear, a part of Decibel Capital. Uh, and today's part, in today's part, we'll see how we can automate the kite login uh, for Zerodha, ever since they have implemented, Zerodha has implemented a TOTP, uh, a lot of Python automation has, are failing. So today I'm going to show you how you can automate that process in Python with this new code uh, that we have developed. Uh, but first things first are some disclaimers. So, you know, we run a, a capital management uh, venture. So none of this is an investment advice. I'm trying to showcase the packages and uh, code products that are available online. Uh, so none of this, you know, you should consult your financial advisor for any kind of investment decisions, right? We are not, we are not in this for, uh, we are not trying to do um, an invest, uh, disembark uh, investment advice through this uh, video today. Um, so, okay. So what was the motivation behind it? This was my tweet, actually. Uh, if you're not following me on Twitter, you should do that. I try and post a lot of content related to algorithmic trading. Uh, so this was my tweet around uh, asking people around. It was ran for about 10, 12 hours only. Um, uh, you know, if there, there's interest in getting the intraday data without paying the API fees. So that was the kind of background with which we got started. And um, I decided to code it up and showcase on this video. Okay. Uh, so today's agenda, what we'll understand is we'll, we'll go through uh, the Zerodha's uh, login process and understand how they implement the two-step login. So if you know, you log in through your username and password first and then uh, send up a TOTP. Uh, so we'll understand how fundamentally it is built. Uh, and then we'll replicate that process in a Python automation. Uh, we're taking zero as an example, but most of the brokers should run in a similar fashion. So, you know, it's not too difficult. Any web-based login could be replicated with the kind of exercise we are showing today. Okay, so we are going to understand the Zerodha process, then we are going to replicate some of that in Python. Uh, we're going to use, uh, learn to use uh, a package or a library called Jugar Trader, uh, which kind of mimics Zerodha's uh, Kite API and allows you to do some cool stuff for that. So we'll, we'll learn some of that. And then we're going to replicate the Kite login that first in the first two steps that we learned uh, with Jugar Trader. And um, I say this a lot that, you know, when we're teaching and when we're sharing any of the new concepts, we try and learn from the first principles. It's, you know, on online, on YouTube, you'll find a lot of Python codes available, which will automate some of the login process. None of them, by the way, have been talking about TOTP automation. Most of the videos have been talking about how you can fetch some part of that process manually, but we are going to show you an end-to-end -end automation today. Uh, but besides that, the reason we are able to do so is because we are trying to implement things from a very first principle basis, right? Uh, rather than, uh, you know, taking an approach wherein you just see a code and then, um, you know, you don't know how it works or where it will break. We'll try and showcase how, uh, you know, you can build from first principle spaces. Um, couple of points to remember for this webinar. Um, like I said, the code shown here is for educational purposes. We are not really um, endorsing any of the products, be it Zerodha, Kite, Jugar Trader, Jugar Data, or any other packages. Uh, I'm just showcasing what's available in public domain. Um, I'm kind of showing how you can use that uh, rather than creating any of the new packages or uh, systems, right? Uh, 
Um, this is not going to be a beginner level Python pack video. Uh, you will need an understanding of Python uh, to, un to understand what's going on. Uh, this kind of automation cannot be done, unfortunately, with a simple code. It requires a slightly more advanced uh, understanding of Python and understanding of some of the packages, uh, which, by the way, we also teach in this program called Office Hours, uh, which is a Python for trading program which we run at Decibel Capital uh, on a you know, semi-annual basis at least. Uh, as part of this program, uh, you get to learn, you know, the this is, this program is geared towards um, non, non coders who don't have any coding background at all. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's not fit for people who are trying to learn Python and have some coding background. Uh, it's just that people without any coding background can derive a lot of value. A lot of people, who don't have coding background, uh, they're always apprehensive about learning to code, learn where to get started. So this program tries to uh, solve that problem in the market. So I'm just gonna, we, we, you know, we are running an early bird registration right now. So depending on when you will see this video, I'm recording this in January, 2023, you might find some of the cohorts being admissions uh, being taken in. We usually open it for a very short window because we get really quickly sold out. So, you know, uh, if if by when you're watching this video and interested in learning uh, stuff about Python, you should you should check this out. Uh, this is our website, uh, db.capital. Uh, the links may change, but essentially you can find it under the education uh, link or education office hours. So this is our 2023 program. It's designed, like I said, for non-coders. We have two modules in it, primarily a backtesting and research. And if you see, we kind of teach from the first principles. That's what my previous slide said as well. And then there's another module on execution and automation process. And then, you know, there's there's a whole lot of information on this website, on this page, uh, on db.capital under education. You can find uh, most of this work. Okay. Um, so with that said, let's get started. I'm going to open up a code editor and I'm going to just make sure I uh, escape out the uh, the window on the, yes. Okay, all right. So uh, first things first, um, this is by the way, a Google Collab notebook. Uh, for those who don't understand, uh, probably have not used it before, uh, just like to say that you can actually run the Google Collab notebook on your own local machine. I'm just, uh, you know, and then uh, in just a second. I'm just going to resume the pause or uh, sharing. Yeah. Okay. I was, okay. All right. So, yeah, I was saying that you can use Google Collab notebook for a lot of good work, it provides an IDE. Um, you can run the Google Collab on your own server. A lot of these things are, you know, very familiar with people who are familiar with Python would know. Uh, so let's get started. Okay. So what we'll do is I'll just create a, a text cell here. Uh, just put the agenda so that we know. By the way, this code will be available um, on GitHub or in a public domain. You'll see the link. Uh, somewhere. So that's why I'm just, you know, commenting it a little. So, you know, as we saw earlier, our agenda for today's class is to understand the Kite Connect library, connect login, uh, and then automate, automate Kite Connect login, and then understand to card trader and login all right so i'm just gonna cut it short so that <clears throat> we can get to the meaty stuff okay so i'm gonna just pause my video so that the recording is uh more useful um uh, you know you can focus more on the recording so let's see okay so i'm just gonna import the libraries here uh, those who don't know pandas and numpy are some of the standard libraries uh, uh you know 
what libraries I'm importing. Uh, so OS is used to um, use it in the path for reading uh, various files. We may or may not need it, but I'm just gonna import it because it's a good practice. Date time is used to process date times. Uh, JSON is, is a format, data format called JavaScript object notion. Uh, it's used in how APIs transmit data from, uh, from the servers to your machines. Uh, we'll import uh, time, we'll import uh, requests. Okay, so these are some of the standard libraries that can be imported without uh, you know, which will be used for our own purposes. In in various codes, this is used, but today we're going to see how we can use that in, in our code. Uh, what we also need is uh, a kite connect from a, you know, a kite connect library, which is the official library from uh, Zerodha. I'm going to show you guys what that means in a second. Let me just type the code out. So we'll need this. And then this is a uh, Jugar library, we'll import uh, okay, so I'm just going to run this. And so in case anybody who don't have any of these uh, libraries pre-installed, you can actually install it from your Python uh, notebook. What you need to do is use a magic command. It's not like magic. I'm saying it's the, it's the keyword. So you use an exclamation mark and do a pip install, let's say kite connect. So kite connect is the official library by uh, zero da. So if I do that, um, in my environment, this library is already installed. So once it runs, it will most likely show how um, it will show uh, that requirement is already satisfied uh, with the Zoom call and recording. This might be a little slow, but in case if you don't have it installed, yep, there you go. So you see, it says requirement already satisfied, blah, 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 right? So we don't have to get it installed again. So I'm just going to delete this. But if you are running it for the first time, uh, you are going to, uh, I mean, you know, you, you, you'll you see an installation coming through. Okay, so to, to execute this code, we'll need a few pieces of information. We'll need a zero the username. We'll need a zero the password. And then we'll need a, a zero the TOTP seed. So I'll show you what the TOTP seed or key is. For those who again are not familiar with it, I have created a documentation on it that I'm going to bring up on the screen right now. Okay. So uh, this documentation is otherwise for our otherwise clients who also need API key and API secret. But for today's code, we will not need that. I'm just going to show how you can fetch this TOTPC because if you already have a zero the account in which you are using a two-factor authentication through either a Kite app or a Google Authenticator app. Uh, so, you know, there's a seed process, seed on the basis of which the TOTP is generated. And uh, the only way to fetch that is through the process because it gets lost. So I'm going to talk about it, right? Okay. So how you can do, how can, how can you uh, fetch that seed is if you, you go to uh, kite.zerodha.com, uh, log into your profile, uh, and then on the top right, you'll be able to see, you know, you, usually you see your name and uh, your, your name and your um, customer ID here, which you can, uh, you know, you know, then you can, put click on that and uh, get to my profile. If when you click there, you'll see a password and security settings on the top right. And when you click that, uh, if your TOTP is disabled, which is a highly unlikely until unless you have a new account. Uh, if you have a new account, this will, it will show like this. If it's already uh, existing account in which you've been trading, you'll see it enabled, right? So I'll show you first, uh, I mean, let actually, let me do this. Let me show you how, if it's disabled, uh, if it's enabled, you have to first disable it uh, and then restart the process. Uh, so, you know, if you click on disable two-factor authentication, it's going to ask the password. It's going to most likely send it um, OTP to your email address or SMS, and then it's going to disable this. And once disabled, you'll be able to log in through the Kite app. It can generate a TOTP for you as well. Uh, but let's say once you've been able to disable it, you 
try and enable it again. Now, once you click on enable two-factor TOTP button, it's going to generate this QR code and it's going to say at the bottom of this, can scan copy the key, right? So how it works is if you have a Google Authenticator app, uh, or any other Microsoft Authenticator. I think they give a few names now when you try and um, do this exercise. You can scan this QR code on your Google Authenticator. It will start giving you a six-digit TOTP. This is what you usually use to log in, right? But for our purposes, what we need is this key, you know, which is, this says this button. This is actually a clickable link and scan copy the key button. When you click on that, it will generate this... Uh, you know, alphanumeric key uh, that you need to copy paste, right? Uh, so we'll, what you should do is when you're enabling this account, you should get to the step wherein this gets displayed. You copy paste this in a Word document at your side, and then we'll see how to use that in a Python code. And then uh, scan this QR code with your Google Authenticator app or a Microsoft Authenticator or the whatever the app might be in use by you. And then, uh, you know, your TOTP will work as intended, okay? Uh, and then it will go to enable and you will be able to uh, save this file here or have this file here or have this alphanumeric string uh, or TOTP key or seed with you, okay? And that's what we are going to need for our, for our work, okay? So for our purposes, uh, I'm going to you can actually load this and save this in a file and then read it from the data uh, from, a, from your drive. But for the sake of ease today, I'm going to hard code it in, the, uh, in this code. So keep in mind, this will not work by the time you see the video because we would have most likely changed this username password. Uh, but... I'm going to create a dictionary, by the way, this is used with the curly braces and I'm just going to copy paste it because I know I have it, I have it available with me. Okay. So this is my, uh, TOTP, uh, process now, um, by the way, actually for, for kite connect, we'll also need the API key. So we'll show how we can do this with, uh, kite connect object as well. But let's just. Let's just run that. Okay, this is the whole whole API, a whole whole of our credentials. Uh, so I'm just going to run it and save it. Now, as far as the Kite Connect API is concerned, so if you ever go to uh, developers.kite.rate, you can create an API for yourself. Uh, uh, this is an office hours API that we use. This is not the same as with this one. They charge you 2000 rupees for this. But uh, nonetheless, you should be able to uh, log in, you know, using the API. By the way, for today's call, we'll ultimately not need the API key. That's the whole idea of using the Jugaad Trader. But I want to show you the process, which is followed by Zerodha and then how it gets replicated. Okay. So when you go to this website and create a new app, it gives you an API key and API secret, which is uh, what you use in, in your code here. By the way, this is for different accounts, so this will not match, will not authenticate, okay? So <clears throat> this is this is what's, uh, this is what we'll be using. Uh, I am also going to bring in a few uh, URLs, which we know I've already saved it down. Uh, these are the URLs to which we'll be sending and receiving our uh, information from. So uh, let's say, uh, login and uh, passwords, username, passwords, keys, and whatnot, right? So we'll just, these are, by the way, publicly known URLs. If you ever go to Kite's documentation page, uh, let me actually open this up. Yeah, this is the official Kite documentation page, kite.trade docs connect p3. You'll be able to get all of these links, all of the variables that I'm using in this code uh, from their official uh, package and website, okay? So this this is this is what it is. Okay, now now before we start, so let's see. I'll create another code uh, a text segment uh, in which we'll say uh, login using zero the credentials. Okay, all right. So let's try and understand how does 
how does zero the process their uh, login and login process okay so what let me open the kite uh, uh, website so if i do kite kite dot zero dot dot com okay so uh, this is the username now let's see what will happen is before before i start and you know showing how it works so you all i mean if you have not you anybody can go to this uh, website and see how it works uh, we're gonna use our username and password so i'm just gonna copy it from here and put it here now to see so you know if you think about what zero is doing zero is maintaining a server on the server is where you have uh, you know all your username password all your um, authentication data saved uh, what a browser is doing when you enter a username and password uh, it's going to communicate that data to the server and the server is going to respond whether the data is correct or not or whether you are authenticated or not so essentially what the browser is doing is is facilitating a graphical or gui based input uh, and you know it's kind of sending it to, to the zero data server. Now, if you keep, if you think about it, this is essentially what the code is doing. Like browser is running a code. It's it, the only way it can communicate to a server is through a machine language or through a code, right? So if the, if we understand how the browser is operating and how is it getting authenticated, we might be able to replicate it. Keep in mind, I'm saying might because, you know, it's not that trivial that you understand always how it works. But if you've spent time in understanding and learning some of these processes, it's not too difficult. Okay. So we'll be using Google Chrome browser for our understanding today. So if you open the Google Chrome browser, you go to kite.zerotha.com, you put in your username and password. If I click on change user, we'll just have to enter it again. So I'm just avoiding that. And then when you... If you click on right, if you right click it, and then if you go to inspect, it's going to show you, um, yeah, it's going to show us, uh, I'm just gonna maximize this. Okay, it's going to show us this uh, inspect section, which actually allows you to see the CSS, which is the layout and HTML and whatnot, right? But what we are more interested in is this network network tab. And then uh, this may or may not be checked. Just so, just check preserve log. Okay. So why I'm selecting this network log is because this is where when browser makes a call. By the way, in our code right now, we imported a package called requests. Right. So requests is a package which kind of allows you to make and receive make requests to a server and receive responses. Okay. Um, Again, you know, the scope of what request does is out of this class or out of this video, uh, but it's a package which allows you to send and receive a server requests, okay? So we're gonna use that. So essentially uh, request is a global HTTP request. These are HTTP requests, which is a, uh, you know, internet transfer protocol. Um, so these are some of the standard things, how internet works, how, uh, your web browser interacts with servers across the globe. Uh, and Zerotha is no different. And they kind of do the same thing in, in, uh, in their code, right? So when you click here, if you click username and password, you'll see some of the requests will show up. How, what request the browser is sending, it will show up here. So let me click and show you that. Okay, there you go. So as soon as we click zero, zero username and password, it, of course, redirected us to the external TOTP required login. But if you more importantly, if you see here, this, this, this is the request that went out, right? So there's a login request going out. And uh, by the way, if you see there's a requests are of a few type, get, post, put, delete. Again, all of those are not part of the, you know, understanding this is not part of the scope of the current video but essentially if you have to understand post is something wherein you are sending some information creating a resource on the server that's done through post uh, get is wherein you're requesting some information from the server so let's say uh, if you're running an e-commerce website and your server has the products so you use the get command to get a response from them or even for guide we, we will use it to get some request token and stuff like that Okay, so, and then it has this URL. So essentially this request has been made to this URL 
it's a post request and the response of the status is 200, which is a standard code for a successful request. You know, again, this is well known in the coding community and the setups that 200 response doesn't have to be, but that's the nomenclature or the number that's generally used. Okay. Uh, and then if you click on payload, it says the username and password that that was sent, right? So what we are going to do is we are going to re replicate this in our code. Ab abhi tak, you know, so far we have just understood how the login and passwords are being sent from your kite GUI to the server. We are going to replicate that in our code. Okay. So if you go back to our code, we are going to create a new session. Now, uh, what this is, what it does is it allows us when we do these get and put requests, get put post requests, we don't want some of our data session to break, right? Our session to lose some of its state. Uh, creating a session allows us to maintain that. Uh, it's a little more technical to understand, but you know, so for now you can just assume that we are creating a session, you know, how your login session gets expired or when you uh, go to a website, they say, you know, your session is no more active, blah, blah, blah. That's because that, you know, the browsers or the servers that created the session, which will authenticate and keep your authentication live is no more in existence. And, you know, you need to log in for, let's say for your banking or for any, any of your sensitive websites, they, they really, uh, they close the session very, very quickly to, for your safety purposes. Okay. So we, we, you know, this is what request dot session. So this is the package that we imported request dot session is, is doing that for us. And now what we are going to do is we are going to, I'm going to actually, uh, we don't have to run this again and again. So I'm just going to show it in the, uh, another, uh, command. So we're going to do a post request. So, you know, this was the post request. So requests dot post or session dot post will allow us to do that. By the way, this is very similar to doing uh, requests dot post. This will also work. Uh, but the reason since we created a session, we want it to persist. We are using a session variable. Okay. Now in the post, if you see, we want the request URL, which is this kite.zerodha.com slash API slash login. If you see, this is our login URL, which I told that we have, you know, I've already saved down. So I'm just going to pass that here, login URL. And then we need to pass the data, right? So if we, what's the data? Data is this payload, a user ID and password. By the way, this is passed as a JSON object. So JSON object, for those who don't understand, uh, you know, for the simplest way, think of a curly braces and dictionary. What's a dictionary? Um, this is a dictionary, the creds documentation, the creds uh, command here. But then again, I'm not going into too much detail about those things. For that, you can join office hours if you don't understand. If you understand, carry along with me. Okay, so we are going to pass our username and password. So we are, by the way, what is this doing? Creds user ID. So if you see, uh, if I write creds user ID, it's going to give me the user ID, which was saved in this uh, dictionary. So essentially, instead of uh, typing it again and again, I can type it once and then reference it wherever I want it. That way, is if I have to change my username ID uh, for another set of code, I can do that uh, right from here, okay? So again, this is pretty basic stuff for Python or any other coding language as a matter of fact, okay? So we're gonna do a, username and password, we're gonna pass that. Now, you'll see when I run this code, you'll see a response being generated, uh, which will be 200 response. So when I run this, you see there's a response 200, which is essentially the same response or the status is 200, right? So uh, this is a session uh, request, a response object. So I'm going to just put it in a variable called response, and then we're gonna in inspect that. So response status code, so this is the status code that we saw here, status code. Uh, this response has quite a few uh, uh, available um, data points or available uh, package packets, right? So if we look at uh, what we need is, a few of these things we'll need is status code, text, and URL. So if you see text, it will give you, uh, the, you know, the status is success and then user ID and then a request ID and blah, blah, blah. So you see this is right now in a more, uh, uh, you can't read it essentially. I mean, if, if you can read it because it's small, but if you want to read it in a more nested fashion, 
uh, json allows you to do that to split this or you know create it in a multi tier fashion so what we are going to do is uh, again uh, the data is still the same but i'm just going to put it in a more readable fashion by doing a json dot loads so there you go so you see this response is carrying this uh, text or you know message uh, for a uh, for lack of a better word which says that your login was successful and it generated a request id uh, and it's for this user id now if you go back to a browser uh, you know by the way this request id will not match with anything that we see on the browser because these were two different requests the browser request was separate and we ran another request through our code okay but let's just see uh, if we can find our request id in their uh, in the response headers it it doesn't show it here oh there you go you see in the response as well in the browser it's showing this request id right which is of course like i said will be different than what the response here because you know it's a different request okay so so far what we've been able to do is we've been able to replicate this login process right so now if you are using your code or uh, your uh, google authenticator app it will be showing your totp uh, which you can enter here and it will go into your account but since i'm not using that i'm going to show you how you can generate the totp code uh, oh by the way before we do that we we will need this request id later on so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you can fetch this from the the response variable like this i'm going to fetch this out okay yeah so i'm just going to save this down uh, in another variable and there you go okay now we are good all right now uh now let's let me show you how you can generate your six digit totp from your code and for that we'll need this totp key and this library called pi otp yeah we have downloaded the pi otp so if i do this pi otp dot totp so pi otp is library totp is a uh, what do you call it a function or a method under it and it needs a seed right so we're gonna provide the seed or the key by the way keep in mind totp code that you see on your app is a six digit output this is a totp key is an input it's an alpha numeric num uh, character that we just saw saw how to fetch from uh, your zero or any of your broker accounts right so the way it will generate this is you use this it will generate a, a a function and then when you fall call that function with now it's it's going to generate this so i'm going to show you how this is the same thing because instead of using a google authenticator app to log into my account i'm going to use this code generated once once we get there to log into my uh, uh username pass uh, to log into zero account okay and let's just use our username and password because this will actually uh, fail the moment we try uh, well it might not fail actually let's see if we generate and put the number here 630299 i think the session would have been invalidated so there you go the login has expired right so it's it's gotten us back to our uh, login page so i'm just going to close this up and create a new inspect so that you'll see the new uh, uh, request being made now we're going to put the password again and you'll see the login request coming up here now i'm going to generate quickly the totp 748960 748960 keep an eye on the network here you'll see how things work and there you go so you see you see it's already loading up that means it's working it's been able to log into the website deepak is part of my team so it's uh, his account that we are using for this demonstration today now um in the previous uh, login we saw how login works so we saw the same headers and what not this time we're going to look into 2fa so if you noticed when we just logged in we were not able we, there was nothing else but then uh, uh, apart from the initial login request but now uh, you know the other requests were generated after that and some of these other things are uh, network responses 
from Zerodha. So, you know, it's CSS is how the, your dashboard is laid out, JavaScripts, you know, there's a bunch of things that are going on. Uh, don't confuse yourself with all that, at least for this function, okay? Uh, <clears throat> so we go to the 2FA, uh, uh, 2FA tab or 2FA uh, request. And again, we see there's a request URL, which is a kite .a, uh, kite com API 2FA, which is same as our 2FA URL here. Uh, it's a post request and the status is code. And if you look at the payload now, it has a user ID, a request ID, a 2FA value or a 2FA token, which we entered from here, 748960, and then uh, a few more items, right? So we are going to replicate this function call in our code again. It's very similar to what we did earlier, but you know, this time it's going to be uh, uh, for the 2FA. So I'm just going to merge these uh, commands so that we don't have to write it again and again. So by the way, I'm going to put this in a variable called 2FA pin, right? Yeah. And so that, you know, we can reference it and pass it on, on the another function. Okay. So our initial response was this. Now what we are going to do, do this time is we're going to do session dot post. And this time we're going to post it to this 2FA URL. So we're going to say 2FA URL. We are going to pass the data, what we need. So if you go back, what's the payload? User ID, request ID. So let's just get those things up. User ID. So you see, I'm just replicating this user ID, semicolon, uh, the user ID, right? Through our code. Uh, it's our creds user ID. And then uh, what's our next item? Request ID. So request ID. This is the variable called request ID that we created above, which is this one. It's getting created here and being passed here. Then what else do we need? We need 2FA value as the key. So 2FA underscore value as the key and the 2FA pin. Right. And then uh, 2FA type is TOTP. Uh, it's actually optional, but let's do that. A type is TOTP. Actually, this is a string because it's not a variable. Okay. Now, when we do this, uh, let's see if it goes through because our session has been running for a while. But I will think I think it will fail. But let's try. <clears throat> yeah, there you go. Uh, two FA pin is not defined. Okay, because we have not defined a pin. But let's say even if we had defined a pin, I'm going to delete this quickly. Uh, even if we had defined this as 8896 foot, whatever, right? 88924, it will fail because uh, the session has expired. You see, now it's giving a response 403. Earlier, it gave us a response 200, which is a success code. 403 is an error response, right? So, uh, and this because the we logged into the session using the browser, the session request. ID is different than the ID that's being request ID that's being sent through the code and that's why it's failing. So to ensure that it doesn't fail, uh, we'll have to rerun some of the code above. So I'm just going to do response one for this variable. I'm going to run this and quickly run this. Now it says it's run. So I'm just going to check out my response and says response 200. That's essentially what we expected. Uh, our response 200 means our code has been able to log in. So if I look at all those features like text, you see it says success, right? So we've been able to log in to our uh, Zerodha account uh, using our session requests, which is a very fundamental way of logging into your account. Now, um, this is not where the story ends. This is just the logging in part, but you can't use this to place orders or do anything on your Zerodha account until you use a web scraper or Zerodha login or Selenium kind of a thing. And you know, we're not getting into that today. So what we need to do is I'm going to show you how you can continue this login using the Kite UR, Kite API, uh, using the Kite API key. And then in the second half of the video, we'll see how we can do that without the Kite 
API key as well, because this is the official formal process that I'm going kind of trying to replicate here. Okay. So again, I'm going to merge these calls into a single code block so that we don't have to run multiples, uh, uh, blocks again and again. All right. So now you see, we imported tight connect, uh, uh, class, um, again, what's a class? Again, out of outside the scope of this uh, <clears throat> of this video, but uh, we can create a new object of the class kite connect, and then it needs if you if you see it needs an API token uh, or API key to get started. So we are going to pass the variable that we need, which we already have from our creds, uh, which you should already have. Okay. So when we do that, it's going to create a kite object. Now, if I try to access this kite object, we are not going to get anything. It's going to throw error. So, you know, essentially what you've done is you have just passed it an API key, but you have not authenticated yourself. So if you try and uh, let's say run a kite profile, it's going to throw an error. It's not going to run. Or if you try and uh, uh, let's say fetch orders or margin, orders we let's try orders it's going to fail uh i mean this is not the call this is the call it's going to fail because you've not authenticated yourself okay so how we're going to authenticate ourselves is we will do the same thing that we did earlier and i'll show you how on youtube you get to see how people are doing it and how we'll we'll automate it right so let's get into this so the kite url actually can be fetched uh, from this board you see so this uh, it's a kite connect api with a api uh, kite connect login with an api in front of it when you click here it's going to take you to a session id with an api key now if you authenticate yourself on this um, you know this is what people usually so uh, if you authenticate yourself manually using this username and password uh, you will be able to uh, get the request uh, token, which we need. So I'm just going to do that and show you how uh, usually people show. So you keep an eye on the browser above. You'll see, do you see this request token? This is what you need to trade through the day, right? And usually a lot of uh, videos online will show you how you can come to this, uh, this URL essentially and uh, fetch this request token and save it in a file and then use that for the whole of the day. Zero allows you to use this request token for 24 hours, uh, but then the process shown is manual, right? So we, I'm going to show you how you can automate that. But essentially that's the role of this login URL, wherein if you click on this login URL or essentially send us get a message on this URL, it's going to respond with a login credential requirement. And once you, uh, uh, authenticate yourself, it's going to redirect on to, by the way, this redirect URL is from the API uh, creation page that you might have run. So I'm going, I'm going to pull up my API. I think I closed it out. Uh, let me open it on the side and show you. Just give me a second. Kite uh, developer, right? Yeah. There you go. So you see, if you if you look here, this is the redirect URL, right? So again, this is my API, whereas the account is of somebody else. But that's the whole idea of using this redirect URL because that's where it's it's going to respond with this request token. Okay. So what we are going to do is we are going to automate this process, and when we get and we are going to log into this login URL, the kite login URL. And when we get the response, we're going to fetch it in a uh, in a variable and then keep it for our use. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable for kite URL, in which I'm going to do kite dot login URL, which we just saw. Okay. Now, once we do that, we're going to do something called a session dot a get response to session. And in which we are going to send the kite URL. Okay. So what we are essentially asking the code to do is to get the response from the uh, from the login URL, right? Now, if I'll run this again, you'll see it's going to give us an error. 
it's going to fault an error and we are going to try and fetch that request token from the error. So there you go. It's going to give an error because it doesn't recognize the redirect. Uh, but you see in the error message, it's giving us the request token. You know, this is the request token that we wanted to fetch. Uh, so essentially, even if it's throw the, it throws the error, we can fetch this request token. Um, by the way, you can also do that with a post request. And there's another method for that. Uh, both of them will have a very similar. So if you, if you are a pro, if you understand how get and post works, I'm sure you can see how this can be done with a post request. Okay. So what we are going to do is I'm going to use it in a try except clause. This is by the way, error handling in Python, uh, in which allows you, um, which allows you to write a code in such a way that your code doesn't get interrupted if uh, if it throws an error and it, it's actually very important in your execution infrastructure uh, wherein uh, you know you are you want your code to not stop if it throws an error because the broker went down or whatever especially if you're trading and you know life capital is online so it's a very standard thing to be used so we're going to do an try accept exception as e and then i'm going to just you know i'm, I'm going to just show how what kind of message it is uh, and then we're going to interpret it right so i'm just going to convert that and then i'm going to print e message uh, just so that this error goes away and we'll be able to see the error message only so you see now that the code doesn't throw an error it shows the right take that means it's run but we are able to fetch the uh, whatever you want in a variable called e underscore message and now we can process it so the way to process it is so um, i'm going to show it another another command uh, sorry another line so you see we want to uh, fetch it from request token from here so we're gonna do a split of this variable on request underscore token is equal to and you see now it creates a list the first part of this list is here until the comma and then second part is here. So this is where our, our uh, um, request token is. By the way, in Python, uh, your indenting starts from zero as in the counting starts from zero. To get the second element, the count has to be one. So this is a way to access this, that element. So we do this. Now we are getting this, this whole of this variable. We're going to, we know there's a space bar here. We're going to split it again on the space. Now it's now the first element is what we need. So we're going to do a zero here and there you go. So you see, now we know for sure that uh, there is a request token at the end of it, right? And this is what the request token is what we want because we are going to use that in, in uh, creating a kite object, right? So we're going to just wait, save this down into a request token. Uh, by the way, uh, request, I misspoke earlier, you create an access token using a request token. Access token is available for 24 hours, but uh, yeah, it's very similar. So I'm going to put it in the request block. Now we get the request token in. And then once we have our request token, we can use the this to generate a session. Again, this is part of their kite API documentation. So if you look here um, in the kite library, uh, you'll see uh, how they ask you to log in. So it says uh, you do the kite connect API key. This is what we did. You uh, redirect the user to receive the request token. We just fetch the request token and then you do a generate session to generate a request token in secret, right? So we are going to do the same thing. We are going to do kite dot generate session. Again, you see the name session because you know, that's what we are trying to do. Request token is here. And then we need the API secret. We need the API secret. So we are going to pass that on through our command by the way this is the official kite login so uh, we are using this soon we'll get to non official one which we'll not need to provide any of this right so once we do this we are, we are going to get the response in an access token so i'm just going to save this in a variable called data so that we don't lose that data out and i'm just going to run this command again and see if we get the data I'm just going to 
its token is invalid you see it's been a while since we ran this so it has to be rerun the token has to be regenerated uh, the um, the request id must have failed hey, it's still failing oh because token is invalid maximum tries reach request token okay i'll have to see it let me debug this in a second um okay i'm back i figured out so what's happening is actually i didn't complete the uh splitting of the request token so you see uh when we run this command again i just separated out the block and i printed out the request token you see it's still having and action and login in front of it so essentially what that means is we'll have to uh take out this uh and action uh string that we don't want in from front of it and this is if you run this it should give us the, only the request token i what the hell am i doing uh oh because the request message was wait, wait a second where is the request yeah you see the request token is now only this one so i'm going to just comment this out the uh, the whole error message but that's okay we can use it uh yeah it was not coming with e equals to again so that's okay we, i've done this as a fail safe anyways okay now when we run this uh command uh actually i uh, went all the way and checked it out but before we do that i'm going to show how we can uh run this command and then get the data out of it right so if this doesn't work now we'll just request uh the uh session again oh there you go so now the data is run so now we see what is data i'm just going to delete this so you see it's uh coming up with the all the information that's needed for the part and then what you can do is actually uh we can replace this state instead of data we can directly get the request token out of it so let's just delete this uh and if i show the data again so you see it shows the name of the email address the access token public token everything that we've used so far in the in the account okay so uh that's what that's what that's how it works okay so if from this we want the access token which is what i was talking about just gets generated once so when we do data dot access token it's going to fetch only the value of the access token which we essentially by um, chaining the request we are putting it in the same um, in the same call rather than having to save down in a new variable okay so we do this access token here and then uh, if we go back to the zero the page it says you can do set access token data access token which we already done so we're just going to replicate that and do uh, access token here so since we have created an access token we don't need to pass it as a variable okay so i'm just going to delete all of these uh, i'm just going to clean up the code because we don't need the print here rather one we once we do here what we can do is we can print uh successful login uh successful login with request token and then we can just print out our request token this way okay so let's just run through the process again when we do this and we do this it's going to log if it runs that means it's been able to create the access token and save it down our access token which we were generating by the way from the browser you know as i was saying some of the videos redirect uh, you to a browser to copy paste your request token access token now we've been able to uh, delete uh, fetch that through through the code and uh, by the way if we do the guide dot orders you'll see it is going to give today's orders uh, on the account which is on 5th of january and just to see a pretty way of doing it we're going to put it in a data frame and there you go so you see it's these are the two orders which were run today at 1419 and 5021 whatever the orders were 
on uh, you know square of i think this was a testing of intraday mis so uh, who did it replace basically it can fetch all the orders for you in the in the from the account right so so far we've seen this how you can log in through zero tha credentials if you are ever uh, you know i just wanted to show how the requests work how the browser is sending the uh, username password and totp for uh, for you to fetch and enable that. So this is how most of the websites uh, that are automating zero the login are, or in some form or fashion are creating uh, their own uh, their own versions of kind of this code. Now, uh, to go the step forward, which will be used in part two. So in part two, we will talk about Jugaad Trader and how to use that as zero the, uh, as the data fetching. We're going to see how to log in to Jugaad Trader using TOTP. Anybody who's used Jugaad Trader in the past knows that uh, it started failing once we uh, once the TOTP functioning came out. Jugaad Trader was able to log in the single pin code based logins earlier. Uh, but since the TOTP came out, that method failed, and it's not. There's not been a lot of uh, a lot of details on how to log in using Jugaad with a TOTP. Okay, so I'm going to show that next. Uh, by the way, what's Jugaad Trader? Let's just uh, I'm, I'm going to put up a, a, a browser with Jugaad Trader details. So let me just. that up so if you google jugaad zero dha or jugaad py you'll see this market setup dot in which allows you to run the jugaad uh, website or jugaad package the two packages in it jugaad data and jugaad trader jugaad data is for historical data end of the day data and jugaad trader is the python client for zero dha okay so this is what we'll be using uh this is their website in which they have a lot of documentation jugaad trader which you can read if you are more interested about it. Okay, so we're going to replicate this some of this work in our login. So if you if you see their documentation, this is how it used to be run from uh, a console, a Python console, uh, wherein you will give the username, password, and then pin, which was a four digit, six digit pin before the TOTP came out, and then it will log in and work. But then you see the website is the package has not been updated ever since the TOTP process came out. But we are going to quickly automate that. Okay, so here I'm going to write about uh, Jugaad uh, replication. So um, replicating Jugaad, oh, replicating zero huh? using Jugaad trader. Actually, replicating zero huh? login. Okay, so. Let's see where we are. Successful login. Okay. Yes. Great. All right. So if we now to do that, what we need to do is we need to import the library Jugaad Trader import zero that which I had already created. I've already written that above. So it's okay if I delete it from here. Uh, essentially, uh, import zero that zero that as a class in the package. If you read their documentation, actually, let me put it up. Uh, if you go to their GitHub page and go to their Jugaad Trader documentation and zerodha.py, you'll see there's a class called Zerodha here. There you go, class Zerodha. And you see it is also referencing to Kite Connect, which is the official Kite Connect library. So uh, they replicate, they provide some of the ways to manage that. So I'm just going to use it. Now, uh, so the, the way code works for this is, you first create an ob uh, object for uh, this class. Uh, you see, I'm using kite one now because for the variable kite or the object name kite, I've already used it for the official kite connect library login. So I just want to ensure that, you know, we don't get confused. Uh, so we create an object and then in this object, so let's just create it. Let me show you how, what kind of things it has. So it will have a, quite a few, when I using dot and tab, it shows all these variables in it, which is also the kind of variables that you'll see in the official kite uh, object. But, uh, you know, most of this will be valid. Uh, what do you call it? Blank. So if I, if I do a user ID right now, you'll see it's not going to, it shows nothing. You know, there is, there is nothing in it because 
uh, none, right? Because it has not been, you've created an object, but you've not given it any username and password. Uh, in the older times when Jugaad was running, you could do that from command line, but we'll see how we can do it from a code. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll just pass on our credentials, which we have already saved above in the this thing. And now it, if I print it, it's going to show, hey, what's going on? Oh no, it's kite one. Yeah. There you go. So your username has come into uh, whatever uh, object we've created. Now we are similarly, I'm, I don't want to create, well, we can create the object again, it doesn't matter. Um, so we're going to do kite one dot password is creds password, which is our credentials password. Now, if you read the documentation or chart, you see, if you read through this and see the process by which they log in, you'll see they have two, three, they have a main login function, which gets called by a login step one and a login step two. You know, these are the functions within this class. So what I actually did is when I was reading this library and trying to understand how things work, uh, I kind of started replicating some of that work. Okay. So we are going to, what we are going to do is we are going to call the login step one through this object. Uh, login step one, right. And we are going to save its response. It comes as a JSON response in a JSON press. And let's see what it does. So if I show you guys what's the JSON response, uh, L error, enter invalid username and password. Okay, let's try again. Let's import error JSON and let's try this. Yep, there you go. You see, it's again. It's if you now if you see this, this is exactly the format which we saw in our first response, which was here. In here, when we created it, we created using the official channels exactly seeing how things work under the hood. Whereas Jugaad is kind of encapsulating it for you and saying, hey, you don't need to worry about how things work. Just give me a username and password, call this function called login underscore step one, and I'll do it for you, right? So that's that's the value add, so to say, for the Jugaad library, right? So this is a step one. Now we'll generate a two-factor authentication just like we did here. So we are going to, but we have to be careful of the variables that we use simply because uh, you want to use it in the same way that the Jugar library has used. So we'll do the same credentials, TOTP key, all that work is fine. And uh, dot now, which is going to generate our TOTP just like this. But now we're going to store it in a 2FA. Variable. Actually, we can store it in another variable as well, but that's okay. Uh, so when we do this and then I'm going to show you how you can then uh, you pass it to kite object. So because if you see it right now, it's going to show no output again because there's nothing inside it. And you haven't, it, the object doesn't have an authentication in it, right? So you need to pass the 2FA variable. So now the object knows it, the object has this. So I'm just going to put this, clean up the cell, uh, I wish Google uh, Collab worked with Merge or if somebody knows how to use Google Collab Merge shortcuts, please let me know. I've not been able to figure it out. Okay. Uh, and now what we're going to do is we first call the login step one. There's another function called login step two. Let me show that again. Login step one, this is what we did. And then login step two. There are two functions that the official, the Jugar library calls. So we are going to do the same thing. We're going to do kite one write one dot uh, login step two. And in this, we need to send the JSON response that the first one was received. And if you think about it, the reason is uh, when we generated TOTP earlier, we fetched this request ID from our original response and then used it after the TOTP to send it through the 2FA, right? That's why it needs this initial response variable so that it can fetch from it the request ID and then uh, enable, you know, you set it up because, uh, and then log in. And then since since we have already set up the two-factor authentication token in the object, it's going to be able to read that, okay? So I'm going to do, again, JSON response one. Uh, I'm going to put this in the code and actually just run it right now. I, it might fail, oh, it's going through. So let's see what's the JSON response one and has it worked out. 
error ooh the invalid totp so let's just make sure we don't fuck it up this time there you go now it has been able to successfully log in right and again this is the same response that we saw in our uh, official client library so now you see you have used the username password on the jugar library to log in one thing that you also need to do when you are running this code is you have to send up the encrypted token because this is what uh, might be and is being used actually by uh, the jugar library to access your uh, account without needing to uh without needing to log in and how we are getting it this is from the kite again the kite object that we created so if i show you again if i show you kite one dot r dot cookies right these are the cookies you know which you might have seen browser ask you to save cookies and all and then it saves a lot of metadata and a lot of information about your session uh, in the cookies and it has a, a token called encrypted encryption token somewhere here if i remember it correctly um i'm trying to find where it is here it is name in token no it's it's in it like i know that for sure that's why i've coded it up uh, so you need to you need to set that up uh, for the variable before this whole authentication process is complete okay now when i when i when we run this i'm just going to delete all this extra lines of code and i'm going to run this and show the same things by the way in the previous uh, session or in the previous there you go so you see the difference here is in the previous login we needed our um, we needed our username, password, and API keys to get to this orders or get to kite dot uh, uh, orders like you know so or kite dot profile. But here we are able to do that through without needing the API uh, API access token, and that's the part of that's the importance of using the Jugar Trader that you are able to replicate all of that without needing the API, right? So it's the same output if I show you uh, that we saw earlier of the orders. You see, in the first, the first table was being fetched from uh, using Kite Connect, the official API, whereas the first, second table is being connected without using the API, only using the username and password using the Jugar library. Now you can spend a lot of time understanding how they work at the back end. Uh, they use something called beautiful soup. They use something called uh, uh, Selenium to log in through, through your account to get this data for you. Uh, but it allows you to access your account just with the username and password. And there are many people who are, you know, who are using some form of, uh, this work in into their codes right so um essentially this is what we'll be using in our part two to uh to log into zero the using jugar without having to manually do anything without having to manually fetch a request token or totp nothing this is all automated uh all running through a code you run this and then you fetch your historical data, save it down. I'm going to talk about that in the part two of this video. So I'm just going to stop sharing uh, for a minute. Um, and in the part two, we'll see how you can automate it on a daily basis, which will allow you to fetch um, cash and futures, options, um, yeah, uh, commodities, currencies, NSE, BSE, whatever data you want, uh, you should be able to fetch it and save it for your daily data harvesting purposes, which you can then use to uh, um, use for back testing and research. Okay. So I hope you like this video so far. If you liked it, as always, uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, or like this video, share it uh, on Twitter, follow us. You know, if you go to our website, you'll see some of our credentials. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.